Good uh, morning, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, Annalise, for uh, your introduction. Thank you to the Europalia and Casino del Sant team for the kind invitation uh, and for the organization. Um, normally, in the original, uh, my original intent for the original date, uh, I, I believe it was the 27th of January when this conference was originally uh, planned. Um, I was planning uh, to tell you more about the historical content of uh, the role of the Belgian National Railway Company, the uh, NMBS SNCB, uh, in the deportations during the Second World War. Um, we did uh, research in the framework of what was uh, what later resulted in Gewillig uh, België, La Belgique Docile, uh, so the official inquiry investigation in the role of the Belgian authorities in the deportation of uh, the Jewish people during the Second World War in Belgium. Um, we did research also about the, uh, Bel the Belgian National Railway Company. Um, I was involved in that research, so I was planning on. on um, mostly drawing from that uh, research to, to tell you more about the historical content and our, and our findings. Um, but since then, uh, the situation has uh, changed, which places me in a somewhat difficult position in the sense that it's difficult for me to uh, go into the historical content, um, as I will explain in, in 30 seconds uh, in uh, January uh, of this year. Um, <clears throat> the decision was made to give my institute, Seja Soma, the assignment uh, to uh, launch an official investigation into the, the role of the Belgian National Railway Company, which places me a bit in the position that it's, it's very difficult for me to uh, anticipate to the results of this, on, which, which is now an ongoing investigation. <clears throat> so, I hope you will excuse me that for today I will just present to you the framework of the investigation, our well, framework, the context, our approach, the challenges, and um, that I will not go too much into detail into the historical uh, actual questions, uh, not to uh, anticipate too much on the end uh, results. Um, there might be time in the Q&A for, for more specific questions, obviously. But for now, I will just uh, limit myself to presenting you the framework of this uh, investigation. Um, and I put just to summarize the essentials, I, I, I put the essential uh, framework in one slide. So, as I already mentioned, the assignment was given, the decision was uh, made uh, by uh, Minister Georges Gilkinet, um, responsible for, for mobility for the, the NMBS SNCB, and also the Belgian Senate in January of this year to uh, give the assignment to Sejesoma, part of the state archives, to launch the investigation with the central question um, about the role of the SNCB and MBS uh, in the deportations uh, during World War II of uh, Jews and Roma, political prisoners and forced laborers. Now, immediately the question why these three very different victim uh, categories. Obviously, it's not at all the intention to, uh, let's say, assimilate these three uh, very different victim uh, categories. We are talking about uh, victims of racial persecution, victims of political persecution, and victims of economic persecutions, if, if you will. So these are obviously completely uncomparable victim categories. But it makes sense to, um, to bring them together in a historical uh, research for two reasons. Uh, first, because from the point of view of the Belgian authorities, um, there was no separate, uh, let's say, uh, file or a separate problem of, of deportations of Jewish people. This was uh, a general context and a general problem and a general set of, of decision-making questions um, connected to military transports for the Germans. Uh, so it's from a historical point of view to have a good understanding of exactly the, the entire uh, uh, process behind these deportations, it, it makes sense to have a, a much broader focus and also look at the other uh, uh, victim categories that were deported. There was also a, a, a very pragmatic reason which is that it, um, we already know from the already mentioned uh, uh, Belgic Dossil Gewillig Belgier research that um, there will be very little 
directly uh, relevant archives for the Jewish deportations to be found. We already looked through the proceedings of the board of directors, for example, of the uh, NMBS uh, in 2005-2006, and the deportation of Jews is, is never mentioned. It is uh, as as uh, surreal as this may sound today. This was not an important issue. It was not an, an important problem for the, for the Belgian uh, Board of Directors in, in uh, 1942, for example. So, um, in order to um, broaden our chance, to increase our chance to find relevant information about the deportation of Jewish people, perhaps in, uh, in discussions about deportations of political prisoners, for example, because, like I said, it, it is more or less an, an interconnected set of questions. To increase our chances to find relevant archives, uh, it made sense to, to broaden to our scope, our, our archival scope. So this is why we have a, a broader, uh, we, we, we broadened our uh, question. Um, so we are now f fully um preparing the launch of the uh the research hasn't yet been launched um we will create a scientific advisory committee um of which casano del san will also obviously form a uh, part we will um we are currently um beginning to uh, well negotiate that 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 sounds very heavy but the the nmbs SNCB is very willing to to give us access to their archives, but we also need to look at uh, the practical mo modalities of, of uh, consulting these archives. Um, the investigation will actually be launched the 1st of August. Uh, this is um, new information because I can now confirm that we uh, have found a researcher uh, very recently, just a couple of days ago, uh, who can start at the 1st of August, and this is the moment when the actual research, the empirical research in the archives will actually start. Um, this person will work for, do the empirical work for six months. Um, the plan right now is to present the final report, report uh, in October 2023, which will be presented before the Belgian uh, Senate. Um, this is uh, historical research, uh, the, the, the questions, the set of questions and, and the, the the objectives of this research are purely historical, so um, we will not be giving any um, policy recommendations, for example. We won't be giving any advisory uh, political uh, recommendations. This is something that is up to um, different actors, policy makers and, and, and different involved actors after the report. This is purely a historical uh, report. So the elements of the investigation will uh, be focused on two main levels of inquiry. First, the chain of decision making on the central uh, level or on, on the top level which will mean uh, putting the chain of decision making and, and also therefore the responsibilities of the different actors in their specific uh, context, shifting responsibilities because the occupation was a period in which uh, the context evolved and changed very, very rapidly, but also on, on the level of the practical execution. Eh? Uh, Laurence already mentioned, for example, the different stations uh, from which uh, people uh, were deported. Um, so that practical questions like that, the, impl the actual implementation of, of the deportations, uh, when and how and were Germans present in these deportations? Were there protests? Were there even margins for, for the space for protests? What was if, uh, potential opposition or resistance? What was the, 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 uh, the impact of, 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 of resistance? Um, so on, on a very practical uh, level. Meaning, we need to integrate the uh, NMBS SNCB in this broader uh, economic and administrative so-called policy of the lesser evil. Uh, this is the broader Belgian occupation context, talking about uh, the judicial international uh, law, but also national uh, laws that applied the, the, the broader uh, judicial context, um, the shifting policies, the formal uh, responsibilities, uh, the different actors. 
the analysis also of the financial, economic, corporate policy of the uh, NMBS during the occupation, uh, because the, f the, the financing system, uh, the, the, the way, and I'm, I'm sorry to use the cynical world, but, word, but the, the business model, uh, so to speak, that the NMBS used during the uh, the Second World War is obviously a, an, an extremely <coughs> important part of this uh, of this inquiry, and I can also say that this is also very new. Like four or five weeks ago, we, we discovered in the state archives uh, the entire financial analysis, which was made in 45, 46, after uh, the Second World War, in the archives of the military justice. So the the expert analysis of the of the financial. Uh, policy of the NMBS, which is uh, a, a new finding. Uh, so there are still some new uh, archives to be found. So this is an important question, and then also, like I said, the practical organization of the entire uh, system of, of deportations within this general transport system. Um, big challenges, archives and time uh, are the big uh, challenges. Um, they're like already more or less hinted at, there is no clear centralized file where you can go to, to investigate this specific question. So archives are fragmented. Like I said, the Holocaust was a bit of a, a, a blind spot in, in, in the archives. Um, which we already know, uh, because if we already tried to find these archives in 2005, 2006. Uh, archives are fragmented, so we, up until a, a big point we, we will have to make calculated guesses based on our experience in, in uh, serial archives. Uh, so in, in, in a lot of ways we will also need to look <coughs> for needles in a haystack a little bit. Um, but there are archives, of course, archives of the SNCB and NBS that were transferred to the state archives, um, the archives of the Directorate of Personnel and Social Service, which is a, a very big uh, archive, and the proceedings of the Ministerial Council after the war. Um, these archives uh, are, are the first main uh, focus. Um, other archives in the state archives are the, uh, the files in the military courts in the central office of the chief military prosecutor. This is the, the, um, the cover of, of the, the penal file of Narcisse Rouleau, eh, the general director of the SNCB. So the, the, um, the, the investigation after the war into his conduct uh, by the military uh, justice uh, courts. Um, there are also um, are, are many other potential uh, uh, archives we can use, of which we don't, do not yet know how, how much information we're going to find, Arch archives of the war damages, the Ministry of Transport archives, service of the, the, um, the service of eco uh, economic recuperation. Uh, there is a file on the NMBS in the, in the archives of the Société Générale. We were able to identify it, so it, it exists. I, I just do not yet know what's actually in those files, but it exists. So there are, there are fragmented, but there are archive archives that exist. In the state archives, the archives uh, currently managed, uh, preserved by the NMBS SNCB themselves, uh, the proceedings of the board of directors, um, the um, the circular letters of the commercial service um, to their sub uh, subservient uh, different uh, uh, services, organization seat reports of the station supervisor service records with with a question mark because. It, it remains to be seen what exactly, there is no inventory, and there is, exists no inventory of the, the archives of the NMBS, so, so we need to go there with the responsibles of the NMBS uh, for the archives and look exactly what, what remains and, and how easy it is to cons consult it. So, And we will also see whether there is still archives in the Bundesarchiv, which is also a, a question mark right now. Um, archives of, of, for example, the Wehrmacht Verkehrsdirektion, um, what still exists in, in the Bundesarchiv, so that remains also a question mark. Um, and we will also, uh, Varia, um, I don't like the, the title Varia because it's everything and nothing obviously, but, but it's, it's also still a big question uh, uh, mark whether we will 
uh, be able to use oral sources, the sources of testimonies, um, private archives. Uh, for me, currently, that is something we also need to see with our scientific partners, such as Kazene Dossin. So, in any way, fragmented ar archives and a, a rather limited timing. Eh? Like I said, six months empirical research, somebody who really needs to do the groundwork every day in the archives, 1st of August. Um, and this I already uh, mentioned. The end result, uh, what, what are we trying to achieve by the end of next year? Um, on the one hand, it will be a historical re report. Uh, it will be because we're talking about a very complex historical uh, set of questions. So this will be a historical report with a lot of nuances, a lot of uh, different actors, judicial context, political context. Very, so it will be very, very complex. Um, I can imagine it will be like a book, uh, like a, a, a historical uh, report of, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 pages, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think that in light of the specific framework of this and the specific questions that the assignment that is given to our uh, institute, that we also need to come up with clear answers of some sort. Not policy recommendations, like I said, that is not our, our uh, framework or our assignment, but I, I do think we need to come up with some, um, some clear uh, answers to some clear questions. I, I think that is also our assignment. So uh, I can imagine that besides the, let's say, broad historical uh, report, we will uh, also deliver an executive summary. I'm sorry for the, the managerial speak, uh, but, but some kind of a, a clear um, resume, a, a bullet point question and answers uh, a very brief document which will, will, like I said, gives answers to the most obvious questions on responsibilities, for example. Um, so that is, I'm afraid, um, the basics of the uh, the investigation that uh, that are the basics of what, what I wanted to tell you today. So the, the basic framework. I can imagine there remains a lot of uh, questions, but I hope I uh, respected the timing, so there will still be time in the Q and A for specific, more detailed questions, uh, of which I'm sure there will be. But for now, this is the framework work of the investigation and I thank you for uh, listening to me. Thank you.